fluoroscopic guided puncture in PCNL, all techniques step by step. In this video, the various fluoroscopic techniques employed in percutaneous nephrolithotropy will be described. Monoplanar fluoroscopic access. In monoplanar fluoroscopic technique, the needle is placed over a patient's skin and oriented parallel to infundibular axis of the target calyx. Needle is then angulated towards the target based on surgeon's experience and advanced towards calyx. Failure to access the calyx is recognized when the tip of the needle bypasses the target in fluoroscopic view without entering the system. Needle is then retrieved few centimeters and its inclination is altered more deeply or superficially followed by a new attempt. The ability of needle to move the calyx while in contact verifies that the correct depth has been achieved. Biplanar fluoroscopic axis in the long axis of the body. Similarly to monoplanar axis, needle is angulated towards the target based on surgeon's experience and advanced towards calyx. Failure to access the calyx is recognized when the tip of the needle bypasses the target in fluoroscopic view without entering the system. To access if the tip of the needle is superior or inferior to target calyx, the C-arm is rotated towards the head or the feet of the patient, and based on the contrast movement between needle tip and target, surgeon can understand whether target is located in a more superficial or deep position. In this case, C-arm moves towards the head of the patient, and localization of the needle lowered to the target in the C-arm view indicates that it actually lies in a superior aspect and more deep penetration is required. C-arm is rotated at zero degrees and the procedure is repeated. In clinical practice, to avoid unnecessary kidney punctures, surgeon can access depth of puncture before entering the kidney by performing the same maneuver with the needle few centimeters away from the final target. Biplanar fluoroscopic axis perpendicular to the long axis of the body, bullseye technique. The kidney is rotated 45 degrees perpendicular to the long axis of the body. Access through a 25 to 30 degrees angle provides direct access to posterior calluses through the Burdell sevascular plane. For the bullseye technique, C arm is rotated at 30 degrees. Target calyx is selected at this plane and needle is set parallel to C-arm axis so that the tip and the hub of the needle, as well as the target calyx, forms a single point in fluoroscopic view. At this direction, needle is advanced and C-arm is rotated to zero degrees to check puncture's depth. In case of too shallow puncture, further advancement of the needle in the same direction will provide access to the system. In clinical practice, the use of forceps during bullseye targeting is advised to reduce hand radiation exposure. Once needle has been advanced sufficiently toward target, rotation of C-arm to zero degrees will assist depth assessment. Reflux of urine through the needle will confirm the entrance into the collecting system. Triangulate technique. For the triangulate technique, the C-arm is placed in a zero-degree vertical position and the point of the skin overlying target calyx is marked as point A. The C-arm is then rotated at 30 degrees perpendicular to the long axis of the body and the point of the skin projecting the same target is marked again as point B. Theoretically, these two points are parts of a circle where target calyx forms its center and its distance from the skin equals the radius of the same hypothetical circle. Based on the skin distance between these two points, the radius can be calculated. Coming back on patient's body, an equilateral triangle using points A and B is designed, with the third corner being the side of needle puncture. 
A puncture targeting the center of a hypothetical sphere where puncture point and points A and B belong to its surface is expected to meet the target calyx after a penetration equal to the pre-calculated radius. In clinical practice, a variation of the triangulate technique employs a lateral rotation of the C-arm away from the line of puncture in order to decrease radiation to the surgeon. Guidance to the target is provided by multiple rotations of the C-arm between two positions, one that is parallel and one that is oblique to the line of puncture. With a C-arm in vertical position, adjustments are made in the medial lateral direction, right and left, so that the penetration angle meet the target calyx. In the oblique projection, readjustments are made in the anterior-posterior direction, up and down, until penetration path meet the target calyx in its new projection. The same process is repeated with the C-arm rotating between the two planes several times as needle penetration progresses until the tip of the needle meets the calyx. In clinical practice, when penetration axes meet the target calyx in both C-arm planes, the correct needle angulation has been achieved, ensuring a successful collecting system penetration. Reducing radiation exposure for patients and medical personnel. Use high-definition fluoroscopy to initially depict collecting system anatomy and its relation to stones and low-dose fluoroscopy should be employed to monitor C-arm repositioning, puncture and dilation maneuvers. Continuous fluoroscopy produces high-quality static or dynamic images in both high-definition and low-dose fluoroscopy modes. To further reduce radiation exposure, real pulsed fluoroscopy can be used, which provides 12 images per second, realizing a further 50% reduction in radiation exposure. Intermittent fluoroscopy can also be employed using one pulse per minute, leading to a dose reduction up to 80%. In case of suboptimal image quality, manual noise reduction can improve imaging. Finally, the use of iris and side shutters minimizing exposure area only to the point of interest can significantly reduce even further radiation exposure.